This last year, you know, last spring and fall, um, unlike any anything in higher ed and anywhere else, but I'm wondering um, what this last year, this pandemic year, has um, taught you about our students. You know, many of our students um, have are challenged with with uh, have economic challenges. They have food challenges. They have, they have daycare issues. Kids are hanging all over them. Uh, but right. they are showing up to their Zoom meetings. Um, they're producing amazing work. I, I always say it's like they're they're writing a uh, <laughs> it's like you know writing a masterpiece while riding a bike. I, I you know I, it's amazing that they can do that. And um, and um, yeah, I, I get off sometimes. My when we're on campus, I used to walk back to my my office and to say I cannot believe these students are able to do what they're doing yeah. despite everything that's they're challenged by. Um, and, um, and now I, you know, if I close my laptop, I'm just, I'm just, they're amazing. And so they're resilient. I know we used that word earlier. Um, they're malleable. Our students are so malleable. Um, uh, they're willing to go with the flow and make it work. And um, so they're an amazing group. And so that's, I always say when, uh, when I'm, when I'm feeling overwhelmed and tired, I always say the best thing for me to do is to get myself back into the classroom. <laughs> you know, it's get, get with my students and, w and with my colleagues, you know, uh, yeah. it's, it's the greatest uh, remedy. How about um, the others, Joanne, Franzi, Ivan, what, what have our students um, um, demonstrated to you? What have they taught you over this last pandemic year? I'd say for me, man, just 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 to, to to speak on top of Bill said, you know, resilient, determined. Uh, I mean, for some of my students, and just like Bill said, I mean, some of them have young kids, so they gotta teach teach the kids, and then they also may have to work, and then may have to clean up and cook dinner, and just to be able to multitask and do all those things, it's it's really. It's a really, I gotta tip my hat to a lot of them because you know, it takes a lot of determination and dedication and commitment to, to with all those things going on, to still uh, come to school full time and still buck, uh, uncle down and try to do the best they can. So, I mean, like I said, I tip my hat to a lot of these, a lot, a lot of our students. That's great. I think, I think for me, um, I've known this about the students, but I've seen it come out more during this time. I'm seeing that they're introspecting a whole lot more. Can oh. I really survive in this environment? Am I setting myself up? Or can I change certain things so that I can be successful? And when I used to spend a lot of time having those conversations with students, I'm seeing, I'm finding that now they're reaching out to have the conversations. Um, so, you know, they've matured a little bit in that area, I think. And I also find that they've, they've um, learned to identify their vulnerabilities. You know, I, uh, they always want to be strong on campus and in the privacy of our Zoom <laughs> meeting yeah. here, that's not recorded, you know, because I tell them I'm not recording. They've been able to just cry and share things that, you know, the, 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 their challenges. Um, so I those are my college students. And then I have my middle and my high school students um, that I work with. And I'm actually, you know, yelling at the little brothers and sisters from my side. Don't make me have to come up from the Zoom and visit you in your house because they're babysitting while their parents are at work. And so the little ones take advantage. And so mine's have to keep going, you know. So I said, don't make me have to call your mother at work. I got your mother phone number. I got God. And I've done it a couple of times. Tell your kid to respect their, they're not respecting their, their older sibling, you know. Um, so they've allowed me to enter their family, you know, their, their, their space and become one of them, uh, one of their family members. And actually, um, I've had it where, you know, I have. I have a college student with the siblings and they're asking questions, you know, so or we're having this conversation, they'll turn around, well, really? Well, that's not true because mom didn't say that or dad didn't say that. And they're like, would you shut up here? You know? So, and I giggle at it just to become part of it. So I think that's an experience that I would not have had without 
that's going on and it's something that's enhanced, I think our relationship and my ability to help steer them a little bit better um, yeah. because I've been able to see what's, what's in the home and the same way they seen what's in my home. I've had a puppy jump over me and just keep going. Yeah. You know, I had a little one crying that I had to get up for. So they're saying, wait a minute, robot, you're human. Just like I'm human, you yeah. know, and you have the challenges I have. And I think it's worked both ways that, no, no, we're in this together. You know, we're in this together. Some of them have given me tips, you know, hey, miss, you may want to consider doing this. You know that you can blank this out. I mean, they've given me tips on how to do stuff. And, I, and I've and taken it. Sometimes I know the tips, but I'm, I just take it like, I'm, oh, okay, thank you. You know, just to, to, so that they can feel good. So I think, um, I think a lot of walls have come down for the students. And I think they're being more true with themselves and, and are able to share that with, with me and my staff. Wow, it, it, it sounds like such a privilege, um, yes. you know, to, to have them offer that, um, that view into who they are and where they live and how they live. And um, uh, what a privilege yes. To, yes. to know that. I mean, um, the, the word that came to mind for me, Joanne, is to see your students in context. Yes. You know, you get to see them where they live and the, the who they live with and how they live and um, how, it, how enriching that is um, to be able to then continue your work with them within that knowledge of that context. Franzi, how about for you with your students? Yeah, um, uh, just sort of caboosing on what Joanne just brought up, that, that, that has been really interesting in, in seeing the context of the students' homes. Um, you know, uh, usually in a face-to-face -face context, uh, pre-COVID, I could get a little bit of, um, especially for the shy students, um, I could get a little bit of clues based on what maybe uh, t-shirts they were wearing, if their favorite music band was on there, or they had a, a, a favorite cartoon on their t-shirt. So I could get the, the ball rolling with that conversation. Oh, you like this, or you like that. How does that fit into your work? Now they just, their, their back walls are, are in view to me now. So if they have posters hanging up of favorite movies or comics or artists, I know if I'm not uh, mistaken, you have a reproduction of a Monet in your background, Kate. Um, <laughs> so you get to ask. It's, it's a great signal to, to start the conversation right. rolling and, and to let them know that, that you're plugged into their lives too. And mm -hmm. all of these life situations and preferences and likes all come together with, with, with what we're teaching here. So it, it has it has uh, functioned as an icebreaker in, in those ways. Um, the students are like I think they're most of them are so young that <laughs> that to them yeah. the shock of being online all the time was really not a shock to them. I think it's more more for us that was a shock. But um, yeah, I have had um, like you said, uh, Joanne. Um, uh, siblings of students in the background and they become interested in what, what I'm teaching. So they just start joining the conversation and I don't have any problem with that. Um, uh, so it, it has become really, really interesting. And and some, here's an interesting situation. You know, this, this whole thing, as you know, is just one big uh, social experiment that will be written about for, you know, decades to come. Um, but I had some students that uh, admitted that they were, they felt, not a lot, but some felt intimidated by other students in the art class that had been drawing or painting maybe since they were six, six years old compared to themselves that didn't necessarily go to a high school that had an established art program. So right now, as they come to MCC, they haven't picked up a paintbrush in maybe a, more than a decade. So when they were face to face and they were sitting right next to someone who was painting since they were four years old, they became intimidated. So now with them sort of um, busting out into these Zoom sessions outside of the face-to-face -face class, they weren't intimidated that much. And they, they all of a sudden they got stronger because they allowed them their artwork to grow naturally at their own pace. So I, I saw little situations like that, that, that just became fascinating. And, and you just sort of, whatever you can take, you know, <laughs> as a teacher, whatever you can take at this point and plug it in and make it work, go with it. Yeah, yeah, it is interesting. I think you're, you're, you hit the nail on the head there that, um, this is all one big social experiment. <laughs> um, and we're uh, 
we're figuring it out as we go. But to be able to see the positive pieces and um, hold on to them and figure out how to bring those back um, when we're on the other side uh, of, of this kind of forced experiment. So it, it brings up for me, you know, my last question of you, and, and that is um, when, when you do have the opportunity to go back and work face-to-face -face with students and be face-to-face -face with colleagues, what, what, will you, what will you bring from this, this big social experiment? Um, and what are you most looking forward to about getting back? I see ways to hold on to some of those elements and usages of Zoom when we do get back to face-to-face. -face. Like mm -hmm. it is just being forced into using that. I think it just made education stronger and the opportunities. How how much are you plugged into these students and 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 willing to to sort of raise them up in these these first two years at MCC? So I I think it's just going to make it better for teaching for the students and everybody. That's great. That's great. I, I would say for me, honestly, I think this whole this whole experience for me has brought up my creativity uh, because I've had to be more creative to get students to engage. And I think naturally when we go back, I'm going to bring that into the classroom. And also, I'm going to also be more appreciative of the fact of face to face, to be honest <laughs> with you, and just just appreciate not only the students, but my colleagues, and just being able to, again, just be face to face and have regular conversations. And I can't tell you, like probably all of you, I am looking so forward to that day. And again, I'm just going to take, I'm just not going to take that for granted anymore, to be honest with you. I'm just not. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Ivan. Um, and, you know, as, as we um, talk um, about how and when we can bring folks back safely. What, what I've been saying again and again is we have to do use our furniture and our use our spaces to create places where colleagues can connect again, where it's comfortable for them and inviting for them uh, because I have to imagine, and Ivan, you just told me it's true, um, that people are hungry to connect again, to have that, that sense of community. Um, and I, I want to make sure that our physical spaces um, encourage that, uh, welcome that safely, of course, um, because we want people to have a place to say, yeah, how are you, Joanne? Sit down, tell me about it. What's going on? And for me in the beginning, uh, when this first happened, I remember I grabbed some papers from my desk and ran downstairs. And I'm like, wait, I'm in my kitchen. Because usually I grab papers and go to HR, go to the next office. I'm like, Wait, I'm not going anywhere. Let me take those papers right back <laughs> to the room. You know, it was, and I miss it. You know, even still, you know, I send out emails. I'm like, when is it coming back? When are, you know, oh, they responded. I'm excited because they responded um, on, on the process that we're working on. So like Ivan and Franz and everyone here, you know, I think I'm looking forward to the day where we can go back in. Um, we made this joke at the church that when we go back in, we're going to be singing, oh, when the saints, we might be marching in, everybody's going to be dancing. So I think that day we'll all be dancing because we can, you know, we can connect again and be together um, again. But one thing I think I am going to bring in the college keeps Zoom. Um, Zoom has been so beneficial for me to connect with students. So, so many students cannot stay on campus because of responsibilities at home. Um, but they've been able to work it where we can still have, you know, connect via Zoom. So where, you know, they couldn't stay on campus to have a session where we can now have that session on Zoom. So hopefully the college decides to keep Zoom because I oh. think it would help for those students who, who can't stay. They can come in, take classes and go because they have other responsibilities. I think this is yet another way uh, to connect with them. For me, it enhanced what we've already been doing. Um, on campus. Great. Even though we were all forced into it. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. That, that March, that March was something else. March of Whoa, last was year. it ever. Well, you know, the one thing I'm definitely looking forward to um, is getting back into the classroom and, and, and in front of my colleagues, but, but certainly in front of our students. Um, it can't be fully replicated in a Zoom experience, but being in a live face-to-face uh, -face relationship with our, our students, so much of what 
we do and so much of what our students take away from the classroom is nothing so much that comes out of our mouths or what we put on the blackboard or whiteboards or whatever we're using or PowerPoints. It's, it's, it's how we interact with them and how we interact with other students and, and they can model that, you know? And, and I mean, I've had so many students over the years say to me, you know, Dr. Donnie, I, I, I want what you have. And because I think we're ambassadors to a new kind of, of life experience. And, and, and while we can kind of do that through Zooms, uh, it's not, there's something about that live interaction that, that I can't wait to get back into. Um, I know this sounds very trite and simple, but the one thing I think I'm gonna bring back uh, to, you know, to my teaching, my new life after post, post pandemic here is uh, don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> You know, um, the things that we get hung up on in the classroom or with our students, you know, listen, we've been through it. We, we keep, we could, we've survived much worse. And, and I think you get back to what we really value and what really is the, the learning, the learning experience. And uh, so I, I think just it's very simple. Just I'm not going to sweat the small stuff. <laughs> That's great. That's great, Bill. Um, you know, I'm thinking about something. Um, my mentor told me a long time ago, um, I was, I, I think it was, you know, some program review or something. I was department chair and I was freaking out and, you know, uh, and she, she said, Kate, don't sweat the small stuff. And most of it is small stuff. <laughs> Perspective is everything. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, that that is something that resonates for me when I find myself, you know, ratcheting up like, oh my God, I gotta do this and I gotta do that. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> Most of it is small stuff, Kate. Just don't sweat it. How do you feel going through what you've gone through in this time being here at MCC? Because you've gone through a lot. What I can say is that um, you know, what what drew me to this opportunity was MCC's reputation. I will always remember that I was at MCC during a global pandemic. And I will always be grateful for the people that I had the opportunity to work with. Um, because in the same way that I heard some of the things you sharing about what you've seen your students do, I've seen our faculty and staff do. Um, step up in incredibly um, courageous, creative and resilient ways. Um, and you know, not everybody reacts to a crisis like that. Not all people react like that. I'm sure you've had experiences where that wasn't the case. Um, I certainly have. Um, but to come in and be the you know the new kid on the block, um, and say, okay, folks, we got to do A or B or C, and everybody just did it. There were there were no silos. Um, there were no, this is my turf, this, you know, they have to do that. There was none of that. It was just, let's get this done um, for our college because our college is too important to our students um, and their lives. Um, and uh, that's, that's a great thing to have been part of. I am grateful to have had the opportunity to, to see um, what's possible when you bring together people who care so much about what they do. And as, as Bill, as, as you've said several times, um, how we transform lives um, and not that being too powerful a driver to stop, to let a, a, a thing like a global pandemic stop us. <laughs> um, just bring it together, um, figure it out, problem solve it um, and get it done. And um, that's, that's what I've been a part of here because of folks like you. So thank you for that.